I watched the uh, uh, Girl Suzara. Uh, this is 1975 made uh, film by Korea. Kurosawa. Uh, Kurosawa made this film probably from uh, uh, the Soviet Union at the time, uh, help, financial help to make this film. And uh, so I was, I left Japan in 1976, but uh, clearly I remember I went to see this particular Suzara in 1975 in Tokyo. And uh, um, I really uh, enjoyed uh, this particular film. The sea of this uh, tiger appeared there in the forest. And uh, uh, so that particular scene was most impressive. But other than that, I don't remember. I know, I, I understand, I remember that it's about uh, this, uh, you know, explorer type of people meet this uh, native man and who became like a friend and so I remember that but uh, uh, this time I saw that again and uh, I really felt that uh, this particular film is it's kind of important to me and I think for everybody else because it's about the friendship friendship between two people one is a captain of the, this expedition uh, group, probably 10 or 15 people expedition. I think at that time they are exploring the, uh, this uh, vast uh, Siberia uh, type of area of the uh, you know, Soviet Union at that time. And I think it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, this particular film I, I think was shot. I think uh, east of the like uh, China, uh, Manchuria area, east of Manchuria area, but it's a uh, Russian uh, territory there, and uh, you know it's coming down uh, very close to the Japanese Hokkaido Island, and uh, that area, the film was shot, and uh, um, I think uh, what I understand is like a cinemascope, first cinemascope by Kurosawa, and as it was. Um, I really, really enjoyed the nature, the shot of the nature, beautiful forest scene, and uh, a lot of respect uh, from the people, from the indigenous people, or also animals, birds, all these things, and harshness of the, uh, uh, you know, the weather. Uh, and so and the story is about this expedition group going there and uh, I meet this guy. I think this guy uh, just stumbling across uh, to, the, to their camp uh, <clears throat> and they, he explained, well, I am a trapper. I am, uh, uh, you know, hunting the uh, this, uh, tigers or whatever it is. And uh, so that's why. But uh, soon I think gradually uh, people notice that he's he's alone. He's he's he doesn't have any family or anybody to live with or anything, and so he is roaming around that area. And uh, but Captain realized this guy is very, very smart, very skillful in hunting, and uh, uh, also the geography knowledge and so forth. So he offered him to be a guide for this expedition. So this guy named Del Suzala asked to accept that and uh, you know so he uh, tell them that uh, his family were uh, killed by I think some other group of this indigenous uh, tribe or something and uh, 
his wife and daughters or sons, everybody was murdered and he became alone. He became a sole survivor. And so a captain initially thought, wow, you know, that's a, a terrible life there. But when captain started to observe him, he has this particular uh, capability, particular uh, knowledge uh, that is somewhat like a superhuman type of knowledge there. Uh, he could tell who is coming, he could tell who went through this particular area, or he, you know, he could have a very, very good uh, eyesight and a good uh, the gun skill and uh, so forth. And so, and also, he is a very good human being, very, very uh, concerned about other people, other nature, and uh, other tribe. He feels that, uh, uh, you know, you have to uh, kind of respect those nature uh, in that area. And so, he really liked him. And that's when the, the friendship started to grow there between Captain and the Del Sozala. Um, this Captain um, has also kind of a, a very warm-hearted, uh, very kind person. And uh, he kind of a, uh, felt, um, you know, he recognized his there's Rosala to be also very kind people and very great human being and that's why he was attracted to him and the vice versa there's Rosala also uh, noticed the uh, captain is very very kind person very great personalities and everything and so that's where the friendship started so they went to the those expedition together and mostly the there's Rosala was guiding them and uh, so one point, uh, the, the, the captain and the Zara uh, went to explore a little bit further, leaving the, the you know, other uh, people behind. And, uh, but during that time, the particular expedition, the two guys, uh, uh, two guys lost the way and they couldn't go back to the camp. And uh, so they almost died, they, you know, all those natural uh, disaster type of uh, wind and uh, cold weather and uh, no visibility. So because of the uh, Del Suzala's uh, uh, knack of this skill of the uh, um, making uh, this hat with the branches or the the, the reed grasses or whatever to make uh, this very, very comfortable uh, inside uh, when outside is very very windy and uh, uh, cold and so he felt uh, he did almost like he captain uh, died of maybe exhaustion or the lack of uh, uh, you know food or whatever it is but uh, this there was kind of uh, right by him and uh, uh, tried to uh, kind of uh, help him. Uh, and so uh, Captain realized that he is the uh, you know, life savior uh, of him. And uh, so that's when he felt like, uh, well, I have to also take care of uh, Del Suzala. So Del Suzala, um, after the one expedition uh, finished, he felt that he has to go, you know, go back to the forest again. And because that's his, you know, uh, most, most comfortable uh, around. And uh, uh, so he, he said goodbye to them and uh, the captain said goodbye. But after, I think a few years later, another expedition the captain is leading uh, <coughs> encounter uh, this a uh, little bit older, much older, there was Suzala. Or oh, maybe it could be maybe five to ten years, more, more or less. But this time, there was Suzala, also uh, very agile, but he started to show a little bit of uh, uh, losing his skills. 
like he could shoot the target uh, as accurately as before and uh, he couldn't see well here and there and so he this was all started to uh, think about himself well he cannot uh, uh, do that hunting anymore he cannot uh, you know catch the animals or anything and so he became kind of a depressed person uh, so a captain offered him to to live with him at, in the city uh, when the expedition finished and you know, we should go all go back together and of course you you are the best friend of mine you could live with me and so there's was at that time already very you know like a shambled and uh, a very oh, pessimistic about his future he accepted that offer and he said, thank you, yes, I, I like to do that. So they went to the city and they started to live together. <coughs> but then, of course, uh, this Uzara uh, became kind of a, a useless in the city because he doesn't have any work to do and the only thing that he could do best is going back to the forest. So after that he realized that uh, yeah it's best for him to go back to the forest. I don't want to tell you uh, because that's kind of a uh, spoilers territory. <laughs> but anyway so that's the story. But the most important thing for me this time looking at this uh, although I also noticed that uh, the love of nature is everywhere. Uh, love of animals and uh, love of this beautiful sea in the mountains are uh, very, very nicely depicted. But mostly, this uh, relationship between Captain and the Suzara and this particular relationship is very, very strong uh, relationship there. And uh, that part I really felt that, uh, wow, yeah, this movie is a great film uh, depicting this particular uh, friendship, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, most important thing, maybe one person's life, uh, one of the most important things, it has a very good friend. Yeah, uh, Kurosawa made this film when probably there's not much uh, support, financial support is in Japan and he has to uh, get some help from outside. So this particular project I think uh, came from uh, the Soviet Union at that time. Really, really uh, uh, have a respect to Kurosawa's skill. You know, like uh, Andrei Tarkovsky uh, type of directors there who is kind of a similar to Kurosawa's and uh, uh, really, really lots of respect to Kurosawa's. So he, he made this film and this particular film got an uh, uh, Academy Award as a, as a foreign film, Academy Award 1975. So that's one reason that I went to see this particular film at that time. I was much more exposed to the Kurosawa's film because Kurosawa's film is more popular in the United States than in Japan. Uh, they are showing more, uh, you know, here and there, they, they are showing his film uh, at, a, at a, you know, uh, Kurosawa's retrospective or Samurai film series or something like that. And so uh, that's why I got to know uh, Kurosawa's more. But uh, uh, come to think of it, uh, there's Uzaro. I went to see it. Uh, because I thought I, sh I should see that film and I was impressed at the time but then again, you know, I wasn't uh, into the uh, uh, Japanese films that much at that time so, you know, I didn't watch Kurosawa's film until much, much later and so, uh, it's a very interesting film but today, if I see it, I like to own this particular film because uh, uh, it's 
it reminds me not just because of the beautiful uh, you know, Siberian uh, shot of the forest and the very harsh winter, uh, saber tooth tigers appearance, not a saber tooth tiger, uh, just uh, regular tigers there uh, roaming around that park area. It's uh, also beautiful, but I think mostly this gradually, slowly developing this friendship. It's a slow friendship depiction is uh, very, very precious to me, very uh, important also. So for that sake, uh, I really feel that uh, if you're alone, if you are uh, probably loner or like myself, and uh, uh, you know you don't have many friends, you have to see this film. You you will find a friend if you open your eyes wide enough. I would say, and that's what I feel.